me in around 2017 when we went to look for a boarding school where I would spend at least one year. And this is me in 2020 having graduated from the IB and having finished my time in boarding school, which wasn't one year, it was two years. Now, as you can see, these two images of me portray a very different person or a person that has changed a lot from this picture to this picture. Some of that was the IB and you can check that out up here, but most of it was the unexpected and all the weird changes that happened to me in boarding school. Hey there, my name is Emiliano and I spent two years in boarding school. I've got to admit that I was very naive and I thought that boarding school would be the least of my worries when compared to the IB, but honestly it was such a huge part of my life and of my high school experience that I know for sure that it changed me and it helped form me into the person that I am today. I'm gonna leave the timestamps in the description so make sure you scroll down to check it out and yeah stick around until the end. There were only around 300 students in my school from grade 7 to grade 12. In my class there was around like 40 to 44. And I was, I think, like any other student or any other new kid at any school, kind of terrified that I wasn't going to make any friends. And that was one belief. But the other belief I had was that I thought that because there were so few of us that we would all be friends. Now they say that a sign of wisdom is being able to hold two contradicting ideas in your head. If that's true, I must be the wisest of, of, of all because I genuinely thought that A, I wouldn't have any friends and B, that we would all be friends up until the point where I got there. When I got there, reality hit me and I realized that that was not going to be the case at all. Neither of these was true. I was obviously going to have friends and we obviously weren't going to all get along. That's normal and that's to be expected. Now. This friendship dynamic taught me two main things. The first one was kind of the importance of having a few real close friends. There's this whole notion online that all you need to have to be a successful creator is 1,000 to friends that like follow you quasi religiously and like buy all your stuff and like do everything you tell them to do. And that that's all you need. Now, obviously you don't want friends and a thousand is a lot of people, but a thousand isn't a lot of people when it comes to people online. So what this notion is telling us is that you don't need that many people to be okay or to thrive. Now, if we tie that idea or that notion to what uh, to Dunbar's number of around, of around 15 very close people, max, I think we can get a pretty good idea of who our really, really close friends are, or if we even have or don't have any of those really, really close friends. I don't think it's that particularly hard to, to obtain those really close friends. But anyway, this notion of having some acquaintances, but then having a small, close, like in group of say 10, 15 people max was enough for me to feel sufficiently connected and supported with my friends in boarding school. The second thing that this friendship dynamic taught me was that the strength and the bonds of our relationships are 10 times stronger and easier to forge in boarding school than in day school. In, in, in day school, it's really common for you to like see your friends for seven or eight hours a day from Monday to Friday. But then at the end of the day, you all go home and you like have dinner with your families or with your with your siblings or whatever. And then you repeat it the next day at school, so on so, and so forth. And with your close friends, you might like go to their house or like hang out after classes or something. But it's nothing compared to the depth that you can achieve if you live with your friends, if you eat every meal together, if you do sports together, if you have every class together, if you study together, if you live with your friends, the depth and the strength of your bond and of your relationship will be 10 times as much as it might have been if you had been to day school, trust me. Since I was in an international boarding school, I met a ton of international people from all over the world. This was really valuable because it led to a lot of changes that I can't really articulate. It made me more a more open thinker, it made me like realize that there's always two sides to an argument. It made me realize that we all see things differently. And I really did learn a lot, maybe not from individual cultures, so to speak, but just from being in that international environment all the time, being completely immersed in something that's completely international, where everybody is somewhat different from each other, was completely eye-opening and relatively mind-blowing. I can think of a few examples that really like opened my eyes. In history class, for example, well, we had a few 
United States students and we had a few Soviet bloc or, or Russian students and the two different like mentality when discussing the Cold War for example was really fascinating. We had a student that, dem that denied the Armenian genocide happened. That was also interesting but not... Anyway, the differences in, in, in habits, in, in like perceptions of the world and of careers and of school and stuff. It was all a great lesson that I, I, I feel really lucky to have uh, absorbed and to I, I feel like I really got the most of it by talking to many different people from many different countries. I think my self-perception changed a bit. In, in Mexico, um, well, not, not a lot of people have the opportunity to either go to Dallas or go to boarding school or do the IB abroad. So I'm definitely above average financially, which I'm inc incredibly privileged and grateful about, especially because of my hardworking parents. So I'm used to being somewhat above the mean or above the, the norm when it comes to this sort of stuff. And going to this boarding school in the Swiss Alps full of very, very privileged and hardworking people um, from, from other countries that might be better off, like, like first world countries or developed countries. Um, it, it definitely flipped my worldview for a second because, well, I was the only person in my class that needed and that had a, a financial scholarship, for example, right? And that, that says nothing about anybody's worth or anybody's achievements or anything. It's just opened my eyes to another part of society that I hadn't been exposed to here in Mexico because I don't think it exists to that level. Not, a, not as commonly as it did there. But yeah, it taught me that the, the realities that we have or that we live um, aren't aren't the same as as the realities of people in other countries. And I think that made me want to work a bit harder. But yeah, that's definitely an eye opening and an inflection point in, in some way in, in my life and in my perception. Honestly, many of the lessons I learned, I learned from just living by myself and from the most menial and tedious tasks you could imagine. It's quite weird. One second you're doing your laundry, the next you're giving advice on the internet. So for example, the first thing laundry taught me was that you should batch your tasks. Laundry is a cyclical hell that's never over. You're always wearing something, so something is always, always gonna be dirty. So just batch the task. Don't put three pieces of clothes in one day, then three the next, and then seven the next. Just wait until it piles up. Wait a week, wait two weeks, I don't know how much clothes you have or you might have, but just wait until you have basically no clean clothes left and then designate an entire laundry day because laundry takes a long time. Put it in, you have to wait a couple of hours, then you have to take it out immediately, then either put it in the dryer or wait for it to like dry by itself and then you just repeat it in like two, three weeks. But it's better to have one designated laundry day and batch your tasks than for every other day to be like a half laundry or a one quarter of the laundry day. So, batch your tasks. The second thing that laundry taught me is that we should really reduce what we use. Wear things two or three times. Um, of course, some things like don't wear your socks or your underwear two or three times. I'm just saying that you can wear your jeans more than once. You can wear your shirt more than once. You can wear a hoodie multiple, multiple times. When in doubt, I would use an abundance of caution and just and throw it in the laundry bin, just in case. But overall, yeah, we should be reducing uh, what, we, what we use and what we wear and what we wash. Ironing taught me how to prioritize. You see, we don't need to iron our clothes. Almost, almost nothing we own needs to be ironed. Maybe a shirt, like a formal dress shirt, maybe like any other formal wear you might have. But apart from that, just hang it out and or just wear it if it's not too wrinkled, you're fine. Really prioritize what you need to iron because again, ironing is meaningless. You wear it once and then you have to do it again if you're not washing or you have to wait until you wash it. So just prioritize. Don't spend time ironing when you could be spending that same time doing something else. Unless you really need to iron it, like you have a formal event or something, then iron it. So lesson number four is concerning our bed. And this is slightly controversial. I put it in this Instagram post over here. But making your bed is important. <laughs> Hear me out. Maybe it's maybe it was different for me because we didn't have like a trillion sheet. We only had that duvet. And 
well, I was never in my room, so I never saw it, and I was the only person in my room. I, I didn't, I wasn't sharing with anybody, so I, so nobody else had to look at my mess. But overall, you can just fluff out your bed before you go to bed, and then you wake up, you get up, you do your stuff, and then at in the night you just fluff it out again, and that's fine. You don't need to, you don't need to actually do your bed every day. I don't know why it just seems so pointless to me because you're just gonna get into it anyway, and it's not like it's a different bed or or, or making your bed change anything. It's just. You just, it just seems futile. Also, there's this trend online of that you should make your bed because it's the first, like, you're, it's, it's within your domain of competence and it's a good way to start your day right and, and it's a good way of, like, establishing order and, like, meeting your goals and starting your day with success. But there is this quote by Paul Millard um, that I used as an inter Instagram caption, um, which you should go like, by the way. But it says, don't make your bed. Order is an illusion. Have a messy bed as a symbol of the chaos of life and as a middle finger to the pseudo advice peddled on the internet that says you can't accomplish anything if you don't make your bed in the morning. And honestly, that sums up my feelings so well. So yeah, don't make your bed. It's not worth it. Go do something else instead. One of the things that nobody mentions about boarding school, or at least that I didn't hear anybody warn me about, was that your work-life balance or your school-life balance will get or has the big possibility of getting severely skewed. Now, before going to boarding school, I spent around 30 minutes on the commute going from my house to the school and 30 minutes back. But once I was here, I was in my room and I was no longer at school. And I did have like a small study where I could work and I could do my homework. But apart from that, I was outside of school. And then I was dropped into boarding school. And I basically live at the school. You basically, or you literally live at the school. You always have access to a study hall. The teachers are always around. The work-life separation line is really, really blurry. And one of the ways I found of counteracting this is by never studying in my room. Never, not once. I would always go to one of the two study halls or to the library or something, but my room, my bedroom was the place where I would chill, I would, be with friends, I would hang out and I would sleep. That's all I would do. I wouldn't study once at my room because I didn't want my room to become my studying place and I didn't want my studying place to become my room. But apart from that, this, this blurry separation taught me two main things. The first thing it taught me is the importance of work life or school life separation. We shouldn't be doing work all the time, not even while doing the IB. But we also shouldn't be living our life or playing all the time. So we should allot time to studying, to working, to, to, to school, outside of classes, obviously. And we should also allot time to playing, to having fun, to socializing, to doing sports, to doing something creative, etc. And it's important that we are able to really distinguish between when I'm doing something for school and when I'm doing something for myself or for fun or something like that. And while maintaining our priorities and knowing that school is arguably one of the most important things in our life while in high school because it'll dictate a lot of things in the future etc we should be hesitant to let it infringe on on our social life or on our life in general and when i say life in general i mean sleep i mean health i mean mental health i mean like learning other things but we should also be cautious about letting our, our, our life in general infringe on our work. Which leads me to my second lesson, which was balance. It's easy to fall into the trap of, since you live in school, you should be doing schoolwork all day. Or since school is in your house, then you should be doing what you would normally do at your house, which is chill and watch, watch TV and be with your friends and everything. But boundaries are important and we, sh we should need to have a boundary between what our school life is and what our life outside of school is. And honestly, just taking the time to really mark that, like I did where my bedroom was my safe haven, so to speak, will really make a difference in a lot of very far-reaching and wide-reaching things. Remember that your life should be, uh, your life, especially right now where you don't have a lot of expectations, like you don't have a family, you don't have a job or anything, so really, this is as easy as it's gonna get. Um, so your life should, or you should, you should try to design your life to be like a buffet where you're trying a lot of different things at the same time. 
and these things should be different, should be diverse, should be complementary, and they should be interesting and fulfilling for you. But you should also be focusing on school and everything, but yeah, you already know that. So let's move on to the next one. In, in, in any place, but especially in boarding school where you're always interacting with each other and you're living with one another, you'll find people that are very similar to you and people that are very different from you. Now, I dare say that I was one of the most different people from mostly anybody else. Not because I'm unique or anything like that, but just because I was among the few that came from a developing country only and didn't have a dual citizenship. I was among the only ones that was more left-leaning than right-leaning when it comes to the political spectrum. Um, and well, generally speaking, my classmates and I had different opinions regarding um, our topics. In some we agreed, in some we disagreed, and of course everything is relative, so I'm not making a case for any any political political side or anything like that. That's not the point of what I'm trying to say. I'm just saying that I was different from other people. Of course, there were others like me. They ended up with being my friends. My friends are like we mostly, I mostly agree with my friends, and well, all the arguments that we have that I had either with my friends or with other people were always in good nature because you're never going to change anybody's mind, not really, and that shouldn't really be the point. At least it wasn't my my point when when I argued with people. But being, being that different in my class or being the only person or like, let's say in a class of 15, me and another person being the only people that lean left instead of right, for example, it taught me a lot of things. It taught, it taught me that you have to pick your battle sometimes. If you start out by wanting to convince the person in front of you, uh, the person you're arguing with, you're gonna fail. That's not how you should do it or why you should do it, I think. Um, people have a right to believe what they want to believe and that's fine But say at a dinner table, there's a few people my age But then remember we also had people all the way down to, to grade 7 So that's around 13, 12, 13, 14 years old And my school was somewhat of an echo chamber when it came to seven ideas So having arguments with somebody else in front of a 12 or 13 year old Well then I, I would do that, I would pick those sort of good-natured arguments, not for the sake of convincing the person in front of me, but for the sake of presenting a sliver of a crack in the echo chamber, in the minds of the 12, 13, 14-year-olds. And it was either just to like plant maybe a, a doubtful seed in, in, in somebody's mind, or just to show people that there, there is more than one way to see the world, and there is more than one way to look at people and look at politics and look at a lot of different things and a lot of different issues. And that it's important to be able to talk and to listen to an opposing view, but also that there is no such thing as a correct or an incorrect way of looking at the world within reason. The other thing that arguing with people taught me was that I really love arguing, to be honest. I really enjoy it, as long as it's good-natured, and yeah, I just, I just really enjoy it. Um, <laughs> now this might sound a bit torturous, and it might sound like it wasn't a good time. It was, I really enjoyed it, I really enjoyed boarding school, I would 100% recommend it. Let's end this video on a high note, um, by talking about the last lesson I learned from boarding school and how I changed that I think is one of the most crucial and deep changes that boarding school had on me and one that I'm really glad I got to develop because I think that we need a ton, a lot more of this in, in, in the world, especially around our age, to be honest. One of the best lessons I learned in boarding school was the ability to laugh at myself, coupled with the ability to be genuinely enthusiastic about things that normally people wouldn't be genuinely enthusiastic about. Now, let me explain. I think I had managed to shed some of this before boarding school, not all of it. But if you've ever tried to be cool by feigning disinterest and by looking like you don't care and feigning indifference, then, well, I, I don't know if you have. If you haven't, good for you. Don't. It's really dumb. I have. I've done it a few times. Um, I think most people have done it at least as like, oh, that's, I don't, I don't care about that or oh, sorry, that's uh, whatever, I don't mind. Um, but it's really pointless. If you're not interested, then, then don't be interested. If you are interested, then be interested, be enthusiastic, be there, smile, be happy. If you try to be cool, then uh, cool is a stupid metric anyway, so let's not measure people by how cool they are or anything. But I, I organized a few, a few uh, events for school and it's all a good time. Like we, we had like, uh, like bobbing for apples during Halloween and we had like costumes and everything. 
And I remember my friends and I were the only ones that dressed up. I was a lamb, which I was really proud of, but I wouldn't have been able to do that and have an excellent time during class and like be a confident lamb for Halloween if I had been scared of laughing at myself. And honestly, if laughing or being able to laugh at yourself is a superpower because if you can laugh at yourself, nobody else that laughs at you matter because you've been laughing at yourself first and it has to be in a genuine way. You can't be like actually mocking yourself and being unhappy. And when we organized these events, um, well, you always have the younger kids that are there having a good time. They're like bopping around to the music. They're like participating in the, in, in the activities. And then you have the, the, the typical like the 11th hand top graders that are just there snickering in, in the corner, laughing, looking at people being like, ha ha. And like nobody wins from that. Um, but anyway, my point isn't about them. My point is that the best way to counteract that and that lack of enthusiasm is by you being a 11th or 12th grader or whatever, going around the room, participating in the activities with a huge, genuine, enthusiastic smile on your face and just generally being enthusiastic and being genuine about that you're enjoying yourself, that you're having a good time, because that just shows people that it's okay to have an excellent time and a good time without anybody holding you back, even if they are looking at you weirdly in the corner or laughing because you dressed up as a lamb for Halloween. It's all great. And as long as you can like genuinely look at people and be like, I'm having an excellent time and I don't care what anybody says because I'm happy with what I'm doing and I'm happy with what this is. Well, then nobody can touch you. For every gram of disinterest that somebody else is piling on, if you add two grams, three grams, five grams, 500 grams, whatever the amount of enthusiasm and of energy, then you'll, you're bound to beat any negative vibes, so to speak, um, 100% of the time. So just the ability to laugh at yourself and to, to enjoy things genuinely and to enjoy them fully, I think was the best thing that boarding school left me. So yeah, don't take yourself seriously, smile, enjoy yourself, and you'll be fine. Boarding school is fun, good luck if you're going. Um, if not, you should consider it if you can, it's great, I really enjoyed it. Um, if you're doing the IB like I did, you should check out this playlist over here. Um, you should subscribe down here and you should check out this video over here too. Cheers.